So, Warren Buffett. He recently sold over 40% of his position in the gold mining company, Barrick Gold. Now, he once described gold by saying it gets dug out of the ground in Africa or someplace. Then we melt it down, dig another hole, bury it again, and pay people to stand around guarding it. It has no utility. So it's fair to say that Buffett has not been the biggest fan of gold in the past. That is why it was such a huge surprise to us investors when he bought a gold mining company. Now sure, you could argue that buying a gold mining company is not the same as buying gold. But at the end of the day, what do you think determines the profits of a gold mining company more than anything else? Of course, it's the price of gold. So Buffett came one step away from investing into gold. But then shortly afterwards, we found out that he sold most of his position. So I think it's time to ask the important questions about gold today. Why has the price dropped recently? Should we be concerned about gold? Or should we in fact be paying more attention to gold now than ever before? In this video, I'm gonna share with you my research on these points and offer my opinions. Hey, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom. Every Tuesday and Friday, I share videos with you on investing and finance. If you don't wanna miss the next update, make sure to subscribe. Okay, so let's kick it off with a quick recap and we'll begin by looking at the price of gold so far this year. On the screen, you can see a chart which shows us what's happened to gold's price so far in 2020. As we can see, it started the year at just under $1,500 and at the time of recording, now sits at 1,840. That is a gain of 25% for the year so far. For context, this is the S&P 500, which is kind of a proxy for America's overall stock market. And in spite of a large dip during March, the market has recovered strongly and as of today is up 13% for the year so far. So gold is up 25% for the year, while the stock market is a lower 13%. With gold therefore being one of the best investments of 2020, why are some news publications sharing doom and gloom stories about it? Well, it's the same reason that many of you have asked for an update recently, and that's why I'm doing this video. It's because since a peak earlier in the year, gold has dropped quite considerably in value. So if we go back to our chart, we can see that gold briefly climbed to a peak of $2,067 and has since fallen over $200 per ounce. That is a drop of 11%. Again, for context, the S&P 500, on the other hand, is at or near all-time highs as I'm recording this. Now, of course, it did drop over 30% in value earlier in the year, but it has rebounded strongly since. So where is the price of gold headed next? Well, to understand that, we have to first understand why people buy gold in the first place. So as a negative, you'll often hear that gold isn't a productive asset. In other words, if you hold gold, it doesn't produce anything. It doesn't give you a dividend like stocks and it doesn't give you produce like a farm does. For all intents and purposes, gold basically just sits there. However, I think that misses the key point of what gold actually is. I mean, gold was used for thousands of years as money and because we use it as an investment and as jewelry today, it has climbed in value significantly when we look back through history. For example, here is gold's price for the past five years. This is a rise in value of 73%. Again, to give some context, here is the S&P 500 for the same period of time. During this time, the American stock market, it has grown 78%, which is slightly more than gold 73, but it is surprisingly close for the past five years. And if you're in the UK, like myself, then the picture looks much more favorable for gold. When we look at the gold chart again for the past five years, but this time we compare it to British pounds instead of the US dollar, we can see that the picture does look similar to before, but in this instance, gold has climbed an even higher 95% in value versus the pound. And this is the UK stock market in the same time. With just a lousy 4% gain in five years, gold has climbed nearly 20 times more in value. If we look back to the start of the century, we can see that gold has been up and down, but on average has consistently climbed in value gaining a whopping 582% versus the dollar and 645% versus the pound. In the same time, the American stock market has gained just 151%. 
the UK stock market has actually lost 1% over this time. If we go back as far as 30 years, we can see that gold has climbed 390% in dollar terms, and compared to the pound, it's risen just over 600%. The American stock market, however, has increased a whopping 980% in this time. And the UK stock market, well, no prizes here. It has gained the lowest of all at 180%. So what do we conclude from all of this? Well, firstly, you can probably see why I'm more heavily invested in American stocks than I am in the UK market. And that's why I focus the majority of my research in these videos on the US. But we can also see that on a long enough time horizon, the stock market it should outperform gold. It should outperform gold on a long enough time horizon. However, throughout history, gold has outperformed the stock market at various times, and not just on an individual year either, but over the course of entire decades. So what causes gold to rise and sometimes even outperform stocks? Well, there are three main reasons that gold can perform well. Number one, gold performs well in times of uncertainty. Number two, gold performs well when interest rates are low. And number three, gold performs well when there is inflation in your country. So number one, uncertainty. Number two, low interest rates. And number three, inflation. And now that we know these three factors, let's actually take a look at each of them and let's see if things are looking good for gold or if they're not looking good. The first is uncertainty. Now we all know that 2020 has been a pretty, a pretty unique year, so it's not a good use of either of our time for me to recap what's happened. You know what's been going on. And with the recent news that there is a treatment for the illness, significant uncertainty has been lifted. And while there are still so many things that we don't know, like we don't know the long-term side effects, we don't know how long it will take until things are rolled out and the economy can recover. And we don't know how many small businesses will sadly go under in the meantime. Even though there are still so many uncertainties left, there are fewer uncertainties today than there were just a few months ago. Because at that time, we didn't know if this was all gonna stretch into 2021, 2022, or even beyond. So while of course this is great for society, it's bad for the price of gold. On top of this, over the course of this year, there has been a lot of uncertainty around the American election. Now, however, the uncertainty surrounding this has all cleared. So when we look at uncertainty, we can see that the picture, well, it looks a lot clearer today than it has done over the course of 2020. Again, for society and for our economies, this is very much a good thing. For the price of gold, however, not so much. For these reasons, it's not exactly a surprise to see that gold has dropped in value over the past few months. But what does that mean for gold today? Does it now mean it's a bad investment? Well, many professional investors are making the point that gold has now fallen back to its traditional fundamentals. So it's used as a hedge against inflation and the fact that it tends to perform well in times of low interest rates. In August 2020, the Federal Reserve, the USA's central bank, announced that they will now target an average of 2% inflation rather than making 2% a fixed goal. This will allow the bank to keep interest rates lower for longer stimulating growth to help tackle unemployment. So basically in the past, the Fed would always aim for a 2% inflation rate for the following year. It didn't matter what the inflation rate was the previous year. It didn't matter if it was 0%, 6%, 20%, it doesn't matter. They would simply reset at the end of each year and then aim for 2% the next year. However, the Fed policy has changed. The Fed will now take an average of previous years and they may choose to overshoot 2% on any given year if they've been under that number in recent years. Well, here we can see the inflation rate over the past 10 years. If you add these numbers together, it gives us a value of 16.9. And of course, if the 2% average had been achieved, then the number would be 20. So with inflation falling below an average of 2% in recent years and the Fed changing their goals, this means they have more free reign to overshoot 2% inflation in the coming years. And as we know, higher inflation numbers are generally better for gold investors. So this factor, at least, does look promising. On top of that, we have to ask how the Fed are going to achieve an inflation rate above 2%. And the two likely methods will be, 
Number one, keeping interest rates low. As we know, this is bullish for gold. And number two, through printing more money. Again, bullish for gold. Now, at this point in the video, I just want to say I tried to do my best to give you both sides of the argument, as I think it's really only right to show you all of my research, both the positive and the negative. And then that way, you can hopefully see both sides of the coin and be well informed to come to your own conclusions. Well, in this case, the counter arguments here is that these factors, which might be bullish for gold, well, they may not last for as long as gold investors would like. For example, if the economy comes roaring back, then there could be pent up demand, which causes inflation to grow quickly. If that happens, the Fed will not need to print as much money and may even be able to raise interest rates. Both of these would be negative for gold. And on top of this, of course, I've already discussed how uncertainty has lifted with more than one viable treatment for the illness, and that's changed the potential prospects going into 2021. Now, when you look at gold, or really any other investment for that matter, there are numerous different factors which combine to affect the price. And if I were to try to dive into each and every single one of them, this video would be several hours in length. So if I can try to summarize gold as condensely as possible, I would say the gold might perform well if the economy takes longer to recover than the average investor thinks. But gold might perform badly if the economy recovers quicker than expected. Like I say, of course, this is an oversimplification, but this is how I would say that I'm currently looking at gold. And for me personally, I think the economy may take longer to recover than many people expect, and that would be good for the price of gold. However, the real reason that I actually hold gold in my portfolio is a reason that I talked about in my last video, the interview with Simon Dixon. And that is that I think we are living through some pretty unprecedented times. I mean, we had the largest economic crash in nearly a century, just 12 years ago in 2008. This year already, we've had the largest single quarter fall in GDP for most established economies ever in history. There are numerous debt bubbles that look pretty terrifying to me. I mean, just take a look at the debt versus GDP ratio of countries like the US or the UK and compare those to historic numbers. And on top of that, central banks globally seem to have decided that the go-to solution in an economic crisis is printing obscene amounts of money. Now, I don't pretend to be an economist or even that smart to tell you the truth, but I listen to people much smarter than myself and many of them highlight how countries have been kicking the can down the road on some of these issues for quite a while now and there is only so long they can go on kicking. Ray Dalio, for example, has been talking for the past few years about how we are coming to the end of a 75-year debt cycle. Therefore, I... I really hold gold in my portfolio, not because of where I think the price is headed next month or next year, but because I want a portion of my money acting as a hedge for the day when the can can no longer be kicked down the road. Now, I'm not as bold as someone like Ray Dalio, who is, he's really actively calling for this stuff and investing upwards of 30% of his portfolio into gold. For me, it's more like 10 to 15%. If I'm wrong, it's only 10 to 15% and gold has actually historically performed pretty well anyway, as we've seen from earlier. If I'm right, I'll be glad that I'm just holding some of my portfolio as a hedge. So I hope you appreciate my honesty in this video, especially as I know that many of you are actually going to disagree and probably leave negative comments, but I want to be honest regardless. Either way, I just hope you're safe and let me know what you think. Are you holding gold or are you not? So every Tuesday and Friday, I release videos like this. And if you've enjoyed this one, remember to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thank you for watching.